All right. I am joined now by my good friend and colleague, the man with a plan who very few people know more about cannabis than this guy, Javier Haas, Benzinga's cannabis editor. Javi, what up, man? How are we doing? Doing great. Doing great. Very, very excited uh, about our guest today. We have an amazing guest. We have Erwin Simon, who's the CEO of the newly formed Tilray. Just as a reminder, Tilray and Afria are merging, creating the largest cannabis company in the world by revenue. Uh, Tilray shareholders approved the deal on Friday. That was the last necessary step in terms of approvals to get this finalized. And we're expecting to see the deal close sometime in the second quarter. Uh, and again, we have the CEO of the newly formed company, Erwin Simon, with us. Let's bring him over. Bring him on. Erwin, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. Very, very happy to have you here. Great um, to be here with you. I mean, do tell, maybe we can start with, with a little bit about the background of how the merger came to be. I know you shared a little bit about this in the past with us, but we'd love to refresh the history of, of how this came to be and how we arrived to the point where today. So number one, just to be clear, the deal has closed as of uh, Friday and the new Tilray as, you know, the combination of a free and Tilray, which will trade on the NASDAQ and the TSX is trading as Tilray. Um, and as of Wednesday of this week, we'll trade on the TSX as Tilray. So all done, shareholders approval, and we're ready to go. And uh, today is day one and, you know, great to be talking to you. Listen, um, it's a good question that you asked how this came about. Um, you know, after 27 years of running one of the largest consumer packaged good companies in the natural organic food industry, which I started in 1993, you know, I wanted to go out and do something interesting, exciting in a new category. And lo and behold, I, I fell into a Fria, which was going through its trials and tribulations. And, uh, um, you know, um, went in there and with the team, we turned to Freya around, built some great brands, built a really good strategy both in Canada and Europe, and uh, got it to profitability for you know nine straight quarters. Built up our balance sheet. Um, I, I'm somebody who believes in consolidation and and building out a strong company with strong fundamentals built around people, brands, having a good strategy, having a strong balance sheet, and how do I get return for our shareholders? Um, the Canadian market, which has over 500 LPs, I, I felt we had to do some consolidation there and who was the right partner for us to go ahead and do it. And, you know, I had talked to multiple partners and I felt the combination of a free and Tilray together uh, would make that best partnership. I met Brendan about a year and a half ago um, down in Florida. We had some discussions. We had some stops and starts along the way. We had some other discussions out there. And, and finally, in October of this year, um, you know, we sat down and came to an arrangement and worked on it throughout the next couple of months that would be good for his shareholders, good for our shareholders at Afria, good for our employees, and what we could put together to create the largest cannabis company, you know, by revenue in the world. So that's how it all came about. You know, there's lots of pieces in between. Uh, that I could bore you with that ultimately we had to do to get this deal done. And as two public companies with lots of infrastructure, you know, lots, lots, you know, of grow houses and customers. But here we are. We're together. It's the new Tilray. It's an exciting time. And it's an exciting time because there's a lot of change going to happen in a fast paced category called the cannabis category. <laughs> that is fantastic. Now, um, wh why, you know, what, what is your role going forward, right, as CEO? And why does Brendan Kennedy, right, uh, C uh, the former CEO of Tilray, take on a more, you know, passive role? Because uh, from prior conversations that you and I had and, and we had with Brendan, you know, we always brought up how passionate he is about his company and how invested he is in his company. So why does he take on a, a more passive role now? So number one, you're going to have to ask him that, not me. Um, cause I don't want to answer for Brendan. I'm not that smart enough to answer for Brendan, but, you know, being a founder myself and, 
you know, as I move from natural organic food and personal care into another category, I think there's times individuals like to do something different. And uh, Brendan is very passionate, built a great company in regards to Tilray. And I think there's times you want to step back and, um, you know, change is good. And uh, I think that is reason why is uh, reason why. Brendan will still be on our board, and uh, Brendan will be a trusted advisor to myself. Uh, Erwin, you mentioned uh, uh, you, you know that cannabis category is rapidly changing. What are those changes that you're seeing right now? So, number one, you know the big thing we got to step back is cannabis, and you said it, cannabis. You know, we're not marijuana, we're not weed. You know, it's cannabis the way we got to be from our product standpoint. Number two is we got to build this around a, a consumer packaged good business, no different than we have to build food around a consumer packaged good business. All chips are not just potato chips or, you know, they're not vegetable chips. There's a brand behind it. And what does the brand stand for? <clears throat> so number one, we, we got to come out and brand this category and build it around brands and brands that consumers can relate to for adult use, for medical use, for, edibles for drinks etc so that's number one is how do we build this around consumer packaged goods number two how do we make sure we have really good regulatory in here um, how do we make sure we have good quality control that consumers can trust our brands that they know what they're buying and and number three is you know what are the benefits of our products is it to give you, you know, energy? Is it to make you sleep? Is it to give you a high? Is it to relax you? And how do we market to that? And with that, we have to work around a product today that's not legalized everywhere. The product that has regulatory in regards to the way you advertise these products and work within the stipulations and the regulatory that we have to overcome to make sure we can go ahead and market these. So today, Canada is the only country in the world where legalization, adult use is legalized. Um, you know, Europe does have medical cannabis that is legalized. And, you know, we're all waiting to see when the day happens that the U.S. goes ahead and legalizes. And when that happens, how are we prepared for that? Actually, I mean, you walked us into the next question, which is obviously. I did that on purpose. You know that. What's the situation with the U.S.? Is it is it a is it a is it a definite yes when the situation changes? Is it a hard no? Is it a wait and see? Where, where do you stand right now? It, it when I, I missed the first part of your question. I mean, what, what's this? You know, the situation for the U.S. Right? Do you have any expansion so, plan for the U.S.? Listen uh, again, and I come back and say we'll be one of the best positioned for the U.S. You know, with our knowledge base, with our expertise, um, with what we've done in Canada, both in a recreational and a medical, um, what we've done on drinks and what we've done on, you know, edibles. Um, same thing with Europe, um, as we've developed products in the European market for medical, and that is for, you know, many different illnesses and getting it into many different countries. So if you look at a till rate today, you know, what we bring to the party we bring strong knowledge, data, and the ability to participate in the recreational market in Canada or adult use. We bring strong data research in the medical cannabis business in Europe. Um, we have in the US today, a drink business called Sweetwater Brewery that uh, is in the alcohol business. And we also have a food business called Manitoba Harvest that sells hemp derivative products. So. The combination of all three, we will do other acquisitions in the U.S. that can parlay into cannabis or THC with our strong balance sheet. And my thing is, as I come back and look at this here, we don't know once legalization does happen in the U.S., is it a one tier, is it two tier, is it three tier, uh -huh. is, it, is it similar to you know, the alcohol business? How do you participate? So I would rather wait and see what's the best way to jump into it, to jump into a situation where there's an unknown out there. When you say you're you're eyeing more acquisitions in the U.S. down the road, like what what kinds of companies uh, yeah. appeal to to Tilray? What do you look for in an acquisition target? So number one, I look for 
you know, businesses that could be complementary to our existing businesses, whether it's some other drink businesses out there that could parlay into THC and CBD products. Is it, you know, other food products or consumer goods products with CBD that could parlay into THC um, once legalization does happen? One thing for sure, anything in the U.S. we do, you know, will be from, you know, a legalized product that we can sell. Um, I want to be able to sell into convenience stores, supermarkets, mass market, etc. The other thing I want to be able to do is change our business. You know, one third of consumers today buy online. The other one third, you know, buy click and pick and the other go to brick and mortar. So I want to be able to have product lines that are diversified that I can sell through multi-channel and consumers, you know, that are buying through those different channels. Now, you know, looking at, at Tilray and Afria, the past and the future, right? If you had to pick one thing that you know you need to improve, right? What would that be in, and how are you going to improve it, right? So, I, listen, I think as you come back and look at both companies, you know, we had their issues in the past. Um, and, you know, we all had our challenges and we've learned from that. Um, you know, as you come back and look, uh, again, it's making sure alongside of me, I'm one person, you know, in leading this company, but a strong management team, you know, that is needs to be beside me here. Number two, <clears throat> we, we really got to step back and build out brands and how do we do that? And again, with our limitations and our regulatory issues in regards to the way we market our brands. Um, number three is, is, is this here, profitability. You know, these companies have not been profitable and how do we work around profitability and free cash flow? And I, I'm big on cash, I'm big on profitability, I'm big on inventories um with that so you know the companies have not had a great profitability behind them and how do we do that you know afria has had nine quarters of adjusted ebitda profitability so with that um how do we continue that but how do we generate make sure we're generating cash um again a company that has good corporate governance and making sure that we can you know stand behind our corporate governance and and, and doing all those things um, in regards to our ESG and ensuring that we have a good ESG scores yeah. in place and we're following those so there are a lot of things where that has not been the past and how do we improve upon those you know to make a better company from a combination of putting all these together Erwin, do you think from an investor standpoint that the Canadian LPs are held to a different standard than the U.S. counterparts? Well, I think they're held to somewhat of a different standard, you know, because mm -hmm. cannabis from a adult use is legalized in Canada. Um, we're held to a stricter standard because we trade on the NASDAQ right. and, you know, we trade on the TSX. So there, there's there's stricter regulations by trading on both of those exchanges um and yeah i mean you know there's a lot of things you're doing in regards to multi-state listen um new york has a bigger population or california has a bigger population than all of canada so with that i mean we don't have you know the population and we don't have the depth and breadth breadth that the U.S. markets do have and from a multi-state operators. So absolutely, we're held to different standards. Um, listen, right now we're dealing with COVID in Canada where the biggest market, you know, Ontario is basically shut down, stores are closed. So there is different standards just because of country and size and legalization. Which other countries are you looking at? And I know I, I ask you this often, but things change. You know, especially in cannabis, things change very rapidly. And every time I ask you this, the, the, the answer is similar, but also a little bit different, right? It, there's always a Europe focus, but then there's other markets you're looking at. So what is catching yeah. your eye right now? You know, we've shipped our first products into China, CBD product, which is CBD oils. And I think there's a big opportunity in China you know, I've done business there before uh, in my hain days and shipping to the Alibaba's and out of the world, whether it's CBD. Um, I think there's a big opportunity and we're looking there. Listen, before, 
you know, COVID hit India the way it did, and that will ultimately pass, which is, you know, just a tough situation in India right now. I think there's tremendous opportunities in India and the Middle East, both from CBD and THC side. And I think first we would probably go down, you know, the medical side first, but their countries would over, you know, a few billion people that CBD or medical cannabis has some tremendous opportunities out there. Um, and I see tremendous demand. I mean, we, we, you know, get calls from partners that want to partner with us. And I've done business in those markets and know how to go about doing business in those markets with the right partner, which is important to do. Um, Israel, um, you know, big user base in Israel today, um, I think, recreational or adult use ultimately will legalize there in the next couple of years. There, you know, medical cannabis is legal today. Poland, um, we've shipped products into the Polish market. Um, I think there's additional countries in Europe that will be able to open up for medical. But I also see, you know, Germany, Portugal, um, you know, Deutsche Land, um, other markets where recreational cannabis will legalize in Europe. Now, you, you mentioned China, and I've been hearing a lot of chatter about the, the Chinese government potentially banning uh, CBD products and hemp products. Have you heard anything about this? Is there anything you can share with the audience unrelated to Tilray, just like a, more of a macro question here? So I have not. And, and again, um, we have shipped products. So, so far, our products have not been banned by no means. And I know there's talks for additional products. So, so far I've heard nothing, but you know, we all understand the regulatory around products going into China. Um, I think there is, you know, again, um, looking at this here, how it's sold, whether it's sold through e-commerce versus sold in stores. And I think, you know, the Chinese government, you know, turns an eye to products that are sold through Alibaba or sold online versus what's sold at retail. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, I know we, we got into this briefly, but you know, what, 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 how does it work in terms of overlap, right? Because a lot of people often ask, you know, why would Tilray and Afria merge if they're in the same business, they're both in Canada, you know, and, but, but the overlap doesn't seem to be very large. So what, what's the situation there? So first of all, you step back, you know, there's over 80 million US dollars in synergies. That's a lot of synergies, you know, to take out. And depending upon what multiple you put on this company and, you know, that's a lot of value creation you're going to create for shareholders that are duplication. Um, so that's number one. Number two, if you put the combination of the companies together um, and look at the ability for market share, um, there's tremendous additional market share we can get with some of Tilray's products and Afria products. You know, Tilray has a very strong medical presence. Um, their oils in Europe are, you know, the top selling oils. They have a great facility, you know, in um, Portugal. Um, they had a good medical business in Canada. They had a facility that produced drinks and edibles. We did not have one. And one of the big ones here is taking their grow as Tilray did not have, you know, multiple grow facilities in Canada, taking their grow facility, taking their grow and their grow needs and moving them into a Fria. This is about 35,000 kilos a year um, is, you know, is, you know, products that will absorb a lot of overhead and bring it into the Afria facility reduces our cost tremendously. So, you know, as you look at companies today, whether it's public company cost, um, whether there's duplications out there, um, consolidation is key and consolidation is important as long as it's done for the right thing. The big part of it is at the end of the day, once we get, you know, the 80 plus million dollars in synergies, how do we grow these businesses from a top line standpoint and how do we drive it to profitability? That's what the key is. Now, I mean, I got maybe a couple more. Uh, one is, you know, anything that you we can look forward to in terms of your earnings report in, in May? Is this May 14th and, and anything we should be particularly looking at? Can I out more? Well, our, our you know, you have a Tilray um, 
numbers coming up, but ours will not be till July, which is the end of our fiscal year. Listen, I, I'm dealing still with COVID in Canada. I'm still dealing with, you know, COVID in Europe. Um, actually, last year this time, you know, um, the stores were open. There were essential services and everybody was going to the stores and stocking up and buying, you know, cannabis at home. Um, right now, you can't go to stores. You have to go to the store and order on a menu. Um, you can order somewhat online. So, you know, I can't wait till COVID gets behind us. The stores open up. There's a lot of pent up demand for the product, which I know. And, you know, so that's number one, dealing with that. Number two is being able to get out there and introduce our new products and get them in the stores. It's difficult to introduce new products when consumers can't even visit stores. Number three is getting our teams out there to work with stores, to work with the Budmasters, to educate them about our products is important to do. Number four is, you know, the safety of our employees and, you know, coming to work, not worry they're going to get sick and that, and, you know, getting vaccines into Canada and that is, is important. So getting COVID behind us, um, is something that's going to be very, very important. Seeing the borders open both in Canada and Europe, which will allow us to ship products, is going to be something very important. But, you know, they, they are temporary things. But I do see just tremendous opportunities for the business as we get behind COVID. Fantastic. Last one, and I'm, I'm more done. Promise. <laughs> uh, you know, Bank of America recently issued a report, you know, explaining that they are bullish on on, on Tilray, and they cited uh, the valuation or the multiples as, as one of the key reasons why, right? especially when compared to Canopy Growth, Aurora, and Kronos. Uh, you know, considering they, there may be an opening for for investors here, what will drive Tilray's, you know, the combined Tilray's valuation in the future, in the next year, say? You know, I, I come back and I, I, I've said it before, it's, it's taking, you know, the component of Canada, the component of Europe, the component of the U.S. and pulling them together. It is driving cash, driving our energy, their synergies. But how many companies are out there today earning $80 million and we're going to get $80 million of synergies and savings. So that's a big, big, that's 80 million US. So that's a big number to go out and get just out of putting two companies together. Um, but I'm a big believer when you're green, you're growing, when you're ripe, you rot. And uh, we're green today and we will grow. And there's a lot of energy and piped up demand out there for products. So uh, the team is ready to go. Today is the first day. And, you know, with a third party, we've been working on our strategies. We've been working on how we're going to execute this, you know, ever since we started to talk about this deal. All right. The uh, Tilray Afria merger is finally closed. And Erwin Simon is, the C uh, Simon is the CEO of the combined company. And we thank him for taking time to chat with us today. Thanks a lot, Erwin. Thank you, guys. And have a good day. You too.